Okay, today we've got the privilege of having Professor Manjay Rezaghi here. Um, I think I've known, we've known each other 20 years, maybe longer than that. It's kind of, I will tell you that if, um, if you're an infrared person, she is a giant in the area from a point of view of not just detectors, but also sources. And if, <laughs> I was telling her, my group, we just bought uh, we just bought an extended SWIR camera, which goes from 2.1 to 2.4 micro, and we're buying it from a couple of her students that started a company called Atola, which is, Anna Jay has students everywhere, and she has them in all the major companies, and they're the ones who are actually making the big differences in type 2 super lattice and, uh, and also quantum emitters and that sort of thing. So, um, I don't, she is so accomplished, I cannot do her justice in terms of her. But the one thing that stood out to me, she's published over a thousand papers, which is unbelievable, and 20 books, and just um, we're, we're really privileged to have her uh, give a talk today. So, and Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a great pleasure and honor to be here in this great university, and especially in the great optical center, and with the great dean that I didn't know up to yesterday, that this great scientist is here at the same time and attracting the best. So, and especially, I had the privilege to have the, to meet some of the student, and all of them, they are here, and it's the great, because you are the future of really everything that I'm going to speak today about. So as you can see, the title of my talk is The Quantum Science and Technology of Semiconductor Optoelectric Device from Deep UV up to Trias. And I'm telling past, present, and future. So the, my talk will be a little introduction about the subject and to come, two part. One part, deep UV, and on the other hand, infrared and terahertz. That is become more and more important, especially for the future. And I give you a little, again, some of the results. But I would like to start by the quote from a Persian poet, Molano, wrote, look inside the tiniest particle, and you will find a universe inside. So let's look on the tiniest particle atom. Nature provides us a full assortment of atoms in the periodic table. These atoms are the building block of all matters and works hands in hand with photon, a part of light, to again to communicate energy from one atom to another. When nature bonds atoms together, the combination interact with light differently, provide nature a rich palette of color to decorate the world around us, also giving rise to the functional complexity of nature. The wing of a butterfly, the feather of a peacock, the sheen of a pearl, all are examples of photonic crystal, non-structure arrangement of atoms that capture and recast the color of rainbow with iridescent beauty. Each atom with the different electronic structure emit light with the different color or energy when oscillating from gamma ray, X-ray, ultraviolet, visible infrared down to terahertz. However, our eyes can see only a small part of this electromagnetic spectrum. In order to detect or create light in the different part of electromagnetic spectrum requires first a profound understanding of the structure of atom through quantum mechanics. And as Neil Bohr mentioned, anyone who is not shocked by quantum theory has not understood it. 
and a kind of material that called semiconductor, the heart of all modern electronic and optoelectronic photonic. To see beyond visible light, scientists invented artificial eyes, such as infrared camera. But however, there still exist frontier within invisible light spectrum that we cannot yet detect to both see and shine light in any spectral range across the spectrum requires a team of scientists to invent new model, new material, new devices. That's what my group is dedicated to exploring this frontier of unseen by developing semiconductor technology for both detect and create light with the different color from deep UV down to terriers. I mentioned you semiconductor. Again, that's a part of quantum mechanics. If we come to the column four, they are the semiconductor material and especially silicon. That's one of the best for the electronic device. Why? Because you have to know we have two the dielectric silicon dioxide, silicon nitride, that has perfect lattice mesh to silicon and makes that the excellent for the electronic device. But column four, they are in direct energy gap. And the crystal symmetry is diamond, no cleavage plane. So it's not good for lasers. And especially I'm speaking about the laser diodes. So if we come to the column three and column five, they are the semiconductor three five, and we can do, again, atomic gap engineering, binary, ternary, quaternaries, and this three five, they have a strong covalent energy, but they have direct energy gap, and most of them, they have zinc blend crystal structure that is excellent with the cleavage plane for the making the laser diodes. So in 1991, after considering many different of the, the different offer, I choose to move from France, Paris, and Central Research Lab of Thomson Industry to come to Chicago and to accept a professor position at Northwestern where they, I was promised to be able to build my own facility from scratch and to be able to do outstanding science. This facility is Center for Quantum Device, which is the combination of material and device research that can enable rapid transition from concept to technology the, the demonstration. But parallel, again, we, the, we inaugurated in June 1993 the two Nobel Prize that some of you have to know, Leo Izaki and von Klitzin, and especially Leo Izaki. That is the one that he proposed the, at the same time, the super lattice and everything that you are speaking about the quantum. And that many, of course, the scientists visited, including the Jim Wyatt. And I was thinking that still he is dean, and that it was his, at the same time, the remark about the visit. But uh, I tried to, beside the unique facility, I tried to make a kind of uh, a strong the educational basis by which to transfer the knowledge to the next generation of researchers and scientists. I developed the curriculum of the solid state engineering in the ECS department with the four textbook that the fundamental of solid state engineering, the fourth edition, just last year, more than two million chapter with the, the, the downloaded. So what we do? Exactly as I mentioned, we are doing the 
by doing atomic and gap engineering of mostly three-fourth semiconductor and using quantum mechanics to make the optoelectronic device, laser diodes and detector and the focal planarizer artificial eyes from deep UV up to terahertz. For that, I would like to say that the, this year, June 1993, you are going to have the anniversary of the 30 years of uh, uh, the Center for Quantum Device that are created. And with the, of course, uh, not only the boats of them that they were continuing from the first uh, year of that I started, but at the same time with three Nobel Prize that you have to know Alan Aspey because that is the, for the exactly the quantum entanglement that he got. So that, I, I would like, I hope that many of you to be there. So now let me to start very first with the UV. Why UV is important? Because everything that you do, especially as all of the students, you have to ask why, why you are doing. The, on Earth, the atmosphere, the ozone, in the atmosphere of ozone, they try to attenuate the wavelength less than 290 nanometer and creating a solar bland window between 240 to 190 nanometer. So up to electronic devices, and this wavelength and shorter wavelength are crucial for the many different applications in space and on Earth. Many different applications, especially for understanding really the universe. So I'm going to come to say that what, why all of that is important, but especially at the present time, the deep UV light deactivate the DNA of bacteria, virus, pathogen, to destroy their ability to create disease. On the other hand, most of the biological agents, they fluoresce when they are irradiated by UV light. So if you have the UV light and the UV detector associated, you can have to detect and identify certain biological agents according to their fluorescence signature. So for that, again, I use the element column three, column five. We say three, five, three nitride. This three nitride, when you put that again, binary, ternary, quaternaries, you come energy gap as function of lattice parameter of the crystal because you can make the crystal that God didn't give us artificial and by that we can create the light and at the same time detection of the unseen that I spoke about. So here we can see that by aluminum nitride has a wide bond gap, 6.2 electron volt, 200 nanometer, and by doing atomic gap engineering coming to the gallium nitride, you can see that you can make the device that cover the solar plant, ultraviolet, visible, and infrared, and at the same time, you can see that with the intersub band, you can go even up to terrorize. But our objective for the moment is here. There is a big problem because these three nitrides, as they are large energy gap, they have direct energy gap, but they have wood side symmetry crystals. And it's very hard to make them p-top conductivity. So for that, I designed the special reactor that can grow atom by atom this material and to make the structure that is required to make this optoelectronic UV detector and light bulbs. So here I would like to show you because you have to use the quantum mechanic and to do the again the structure that they're using all of that is the super lattice. Why I have to explain to you why? Because when you have this material exactly 
all of them, their lat is mismatched with each, other, with each other. And you have no substrate that can be matched with that. And there is no way at the present on to make the bulk aluminum nitride, gallium nitride. And that is the future. If anybody can do, I believe that 100% has going to have another Nobel Prize for that. But that, for that what we use, the best substrate is the sapphire, because sapphire is the wood side, but has a big lattice mismatch. But we can manage the structure to put on sapphire, and here is the PIN. When we do the PIN structure, if you do the forward bias for the inter, interband, forward bias, you have emission, and by the reverse bias, you can have detection very similar structure. So here we have responsivity as function of wavelength by changing the composition of aluminum in aluminum gallium nitride PIN detector. As you can see, very nice difference detector with the difference wavelength from 200 nanometer up to gallium nitride 400 with the four, five, six order of magnitude rejection ratio, but here is the limit of the theoretical limit of the quantum efficiency that is one for the PIN, and as you can see here. But similar material we did at the same time for to make, the, again, the laser and emitting, emitter at the same time, light emitting diode, because we need, for each wavelength, we need to have at the same time, because detection, emission, they are connected with each other. One cannot exist without the other. So here, what we did by using, because the objective is to put everything with silicon. That why, because silicon, first of all, is the mechanically, is very strong, but all of the electronic is based on silicon. And that's the dream of all of the scientists that are working. I believe that exactly Professor Tom Koch can they say that absolutely. They, we want to put everything on silicon. So what I did, we try to come with the lateral epitaxial overgrowth. What does mean to weigh, to do the way, I'm not going to the detail of all of that, because you can find that, but to be aware. We can send all of the dislocation parallel to the interface, and the, on the top, we have the layer defect free. And for that, as you can see here, we did, that is the, all of the, that is the LED, Anything of the 280, 265, in, and each of them, on the bottom, we have fluorescence and absorption spectra of some of the biomarkers, such as tyrosine, tryptophan. Tryptophan is exactly that's the, the anthrax at the same time. And it, so everything that you can see, we demonstrated for the first time, and we make the chemical sensing. At the time, nobody could really believe that is possible because p-top of the aluminum gallium nitride and this word but the, the, the large bond gap material again it was my pattern long time ago but what happens look at here when you see that just last year they demonstrated that this 280 nanometer led that we developed long time ago not only for anthrax can kill coronavirus on the surfaces and in the air that we breathe, less, more than 99%, less than one second. And not only that, by making no, the exactly, the by Perry, the, 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 this LED, with the detector that I showed you, we can make the, a small system that rapidly detects biological agents, such as exactly all of the, the, the different virus, uh, according to their fluorescence spectrum. But what we need? We need more. At the present time, we need to go shorter wavelength, and we need to have single photon detection. It means that to have the arrays avalanche photo detector to be able to single photon in short wavelength with the high power laser. Only is thinking about the only space. How we can is important for the discovery of the things that we don't know, and on the earth for the different virus that is coming, how we can have the, to detect them. So all of that that you can see is the research, and as I explained to you from my talk, past, present, future, 
everything that I'm explaining to you, that it was, it is, and is continuing, like air and oxygen, to be really in for importance. And that I want again to repeat because all of you are scientists to understand that. You know, I'm telling the three five, we can speak about anything that we want for the quantum science. That is the foundation. You can do everything, but that's the best. No, coming to say that, so what's L? Okay, that is the laser, the first gallium medium, so the first blue lasers. It came 1993 from Nishio in Japan, and the second one in the world came from North Spain, from my group, and it was the result, and it was a lot of, at the same time, the discussion, and it was at the, the Cornell that the uh, Lester Eastman invited, and he took the result and he explained to the world, yes, is the blue lasers. So, now, what is next? That is the new result that we are doing. One part for the single photon, and at the same time, how to decrease the car, the deeper, the, 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 the dark current. I explained to you the defect. Any one defect increase the dark current of the detector. Any one defect in the active layers kill the laser in continuous way. So the understanding of the defect and the managing, engineering of the defect, that is basic for any quantum device that we are speaking. So that is the new result that is on the cover and is continuing at the same time. But with the aluminum notchard, we have very limited, we can go up to 200 nanometer, and at the same time, we cannot have substrate. But there is another kind of material. What is that? Again, the semiconductor, three, six oxide, gallium oxide. So it shows that the gallium oxide, first of all, is polymorph, and that is the material that we know since long time. But they came to me again, asked me to be involved. Because if you come, aluminum gallium nitride band gap as function of average of the, the lattice parameter, that is aluminum gallium nitride. But if you go to the gallium oxide and to do the atomic gap engineering with the aluminum and the, and the, at the same time aluminum, and we can have larger, again, the wavelength and Beauty is they are semiconductor, direct gap, and large at the same time. The lattice parameter, uh, the, the large energy gap, but we can have substrate for that. We can have the, 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 the Chukrovsky to make and to make this gallium oxide substrate. But not only that, they show that the Baligo parameter of the gallium oxide is much higher than, better than the silicon carbide, gallium nitride, that they are doing so. That is excellent for the high power transistor. So, but again, another problem, we cannot have the pito. So that's the reason, exactly as you can see here, that is polymorph that has different phase, beta, gamma, and alpha, and that is the beta phase that is the semiconductor. But something that we did, it was very interesting. We tried by the growth to understand and to come up with the copper phase, that is ultra-rumbi, and why they, and copper phase at the same time is a large bond gap with the direct energy gap, but they have the ferroelectric behavior that is very important and large spontaneous polarization for the, that is more than three times higher than aluminum nitride. So what we did, exactly, we demonstrated how to have the phase transition and that by growing again this material, and we make beta, gamma, and we demonstrate it, because we have to be very careful with the theory in the semiconductor material. But it's experimentally, we demonstrated, that's at the same time we have the pattern for all of that, and that, that you have the X-ray, and that is the uh, scanning electron microscope, show that the alpha and beta. And now, if you have the nitrogen, face of the aluminum nitride and gallium aluminum nitride, they are the polar. So if you grown, they, if you grown this material on the gallium oxide, on the, the nitrogen face of aluminum nitride, gallium aluminum nitride, you can have very high two-dimension electron gas. On the other hand, the P-top is the very problem. So we demonstrated again by using the silicon as an amphotery, we demonstrated the 
Kitab for the first time, but I explain to you, when you have the new material, nothing can be proof better than the device, that the device can speak. No theory, no characterization, everything that they have, but the device can speak. So we demonstrate that and at the same time, but the, another thing that we did, again, to make this material polar on gallium oxide, and we demonstrated very high mobility. And we did opposite. It means that we try to grow gallium oxide off the top of that. Exactly as you can see, similar. So all of that, that their future is just starting, is for the future for the many different, again, quantum information and quantum device and using the different cost. So for that, I tell them, in 1993, by developing this material, we try to do exactly as you can see, everything is for the first time. And if you ask why in the, the, the applied physics letters, because when I came to this country and the difference, the, the, the group from the, especially from DOD, they wanted to give me funding and I was asking, what do you want for? And they were showing that the journal of the applied physics letters. And that is the reason I publish everything. And now, Exactly as you can see, there are many different things that we demonstrated again for the tunneling and the, the, the different the kind of that, that all of that is going, it was, it is, and is continuing for the future again. Now, let me to go to the infrared part. Why infrared is important? And I'm speaking about the first laser diode. Again, I explained that. Laser diode. And there are three major fundamental component that is laser detector and transistor. These three, they are the foundation of everything. And when you have that, you can build everything on top of that. So here, why? Because for the laser diode, is not for all of you, you know, there are so many different applications, but I'm showing you here how, how with the three, five semiconductor, we did here you have the, some of the maybe first and the best laser diodes from 200 nanometer up to 300 micron in terahertz. Some of you that you are working with the nonlinear and optical fiber, you have to know that optical fiber is not lasers. You need the pump lasers. So the pump lasers, it means that laser diodes that can, can already revolutionize telecommunication and everything, and is continuing. So in the case of the UV, I explained already, in the case of the gallium 800-980 that all of you are working, it was the material, aluminum gallium astronaut, gallium astronaut, that was not reliable, it has a, a problem, and that it was very expensive, the power, for each power, it was more than $1,000, I developed the new material, gallium-free, ternary, quaternary, on the, at the same time, with the MOCVD, that I, the, 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 with the device, that that I published exactly in the nature when I came, and immediately the pattern, and it went to the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the for the uh, production, and that everything is in my book, MOCVD Challenge Volume 2, all of the information is here, I'm not going to speak about it. For the 1.3, 1.5 micron, again, it was the liquid phase epitaxy, and everybody was going, but the problem was how to have the DFP and how to have the, really, the quantum structure. So that, again, I developed the MOCVD with the, 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 and they demonstrated and the, and the information, everything. That has changed really the telecommunication in the 1980, after my PhD in the 90, up to 1990. And that, everything is in my book, MOCV the Challenge Volume 1, and now is the second edition. This result is the first endophosphate, gallium indium astronaut super lattice that changed really everything that I'm giving now for the infrared and the terrorist lasers. So that, okay, now we are coming to the infrared part. Infrared part, that is one part, is the interband or intersubband. Interband, okay, that you have the minority carrier. It means that is the electron and hole that they, they combine with each other in the active layers and the wavelength, the emitting wavelength. 
or the absorption of the detector is related to the energy gap of the semiconductor material. But when you go to the very short wavelength, a very long wavelength, in this case, the energy gap it becomes very small. KT is only 25 milli electron volt. So in this case, we go to the inter band And using what? Super lattice. It was, again, Leo Izaki that we did so. In 1970, he proposed the super lattice after quantum mechanics, exactly, of course. And that, he demonstrated the transport and at the same time the tunneling and that. After 1970, immediately 1971, it was Kazarino Fansuri that they tried to come with the ideas in the semiconductor super lattice is possible. They demonstrated that it's possible to have the electromagnetic wave radiation in the infrared. And that many different groups across the, 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 the world, they tried to work on that. In the, they demonstrated very nice optical, optical pump, the pumping, but the first electrical pumping came from the Bell Labs, and it was Alcho that he put that to say that, okay, that is quantum cascade lasers. And that they were doing exactly between 1994 to 1997. It was Ellen Durvasula from the DARPA and the Henry Everett from the Army boats. They were paying, supporting my group for the inter, interband G5 on Timonite base and the group in the Bell Labs, the, the capacitors group for the intercept band. They did the first demonstration of the electrical injection, but at very low temperature, very low power. 1997, they came in March to my group, and they asked me to go for the quantum cascade. And that, the same, one month later, what we did, the same thing, I used the T5 semiconductor, especially phosphorus space in the phosphate because they were doing gallium aluminum, gallium astronaut, gallium astronaut, gallium aluminum astronaut, and they were doing with MBE. So I developed not only the atomic and gap engineering of this material that we can have, not only perfect lattice mesh to indium phosphate, but we can do a strain balancing and to change the, the gap, especially the conductor, the, the discontinuity of the conduction band, and to have perfect lattice mesh, and I develop at the same time the gas source molecular beam epitaxy and MOCVD for that. So I will only to show you, for all of you to understand, what does mean when you are speaking about the inter band lasers, quantum cascade lasers. Here on the top, we have the digital camera image of the packaged quantum cascade lasers. That and the size is one centimeter. Most of that is the copper heatsink. The same heatsink that I developed for the 1.3, 1.5, I'm using now for the quantum cascade. The laser part is just the thing here, a small thing. As you can see, it's very complicated. If now with the SCM and TM, we zoom each box, here we can see the gold wire bonding on the diode. Here we can see double channel structure that define at the, in the middle the ridge of the lasers. And that, this part, the white part, is the active layer of, this, of the lasers. And these active layers in this structure, thickness is 1.5 micron, and the width is approximately 10 micron. Here we have active layers is consists of 30 different, exactly the same stage. Exactly the same. And each stage is the active layers and the injector. Active layers is the transfer of the electron from the higher energy level to the bottom and to give the photon. And the wavelength of the photon depends on the thickness of the quantum well and the composition of the energy gap of the material. And the injector side by side, the role is to collect the used electron from active layers and to inject to the next stage that they are exactly the same. So for each injection of the one photon, we can have many, that's the reason we say cascading. So we can increase the different stage and to increase the power. And here you have the atomic scale of each layer can be only one or two monolayer. And that's so, 
if you come back from here, you can see that you have the material, you have the processing, and you have the device. So let me rapidly to show you the world first demonstration of single mode, high power, high ballpark efficiency, continuous wave, room temperature, short, mid, and long wavelength. Everything that I'm showing you here, you have to understand that is a unique and that is the exactly it was, it is, and continue, that's the future. So, one month later, we did that, and it was a lot of publicity, and then they, in the, one of the publicity the, in the Photonic, and still up to now, our group is only one to demonstrate from three micron up to now to three, up to one tera is at the same time. Room temperature, high power continuous wave. We have the record of the continuous wave power 5.7 watts with the efficiency, wall plug efficiency, 22% near 4.7 micron. That's a very important wavelength for the infrared counter measure. We have the record, continuous wave power, 8.2 watts at 8.3 micron. That again, that is for many. So only look at here. By using the DFB photonic crystal, that is the structure. <laughs> only three millimeter cavity length and only 400 micron widths, single mode emitted the far field, that is the diffraction limited, single mode emitting output power 34 watts at 4.4 micron. We did again angle cavity design, new design, with only 5.8 millimeter cavity length, only 300 micron width, and with the 12 degree, that exactly as you can see, the far field is three degree, two times the fraction limit, single mode emitting, more than 10% wall plug efficiency, 203 watts is coming out. 203 watts. Okay, and now, look at here. We need monolithic widely tunable, because they, most of the explosive, such as TNT, they have absorption spectra between six to 10 micron. Homeland Security wanted to have very simple system that they can detect and portable without to have any external part. So they came to Northwestern, again, to ask us for the first time they came and that. Look at that here, what we did. Using exactly to have the wavelength tunable of the laser beam between six to 10 micron by using the inte monolithic integration of eight sample grading on chip combined with the beam combiner and coming from one output exactly the from six to 10 micron, and we build a electronic system around the source in order to have very random, random wavelength selection and very rapid scanning up to one kilohertz. And as you can see, that is the FDIR result, and that is the tunable or result. Two of the system is in the NRL, the Kanziros group for the demonstration, and that is the Homeland Security published to say that the result at Northwestern is exceptional. So now, monolithic steering for the many different applications, such as aircraft protection and mobile at the same time, their communication link. We need, we came with the monolithic integration of surface emitting exactly lasers that we demonstrated more than 17.9 degree widest exactly the, the steering by doing the grating out coupler monolithically integrated in the laser and the, we had the more than 200 centimeter minus one, the 200 nanometer for the tuning by sample grading that we did and we incorporated the grating heater in order that to do the a small adjustment for any wavelength that is coming out. And you can see that here we have the, okay, sorry, we have, I'm sorry because that is not, let me, to see that here, yes. 
Okay, as you can see here, we can do the very rapid scanning with the, at the 3 dB bandwidth of 7.75 kHz, and that here the far field is very 0.4 to 0.6 single mode without any external power. At the present time, we have a steering in the two dimension with the very high and even continuous wave, except that unfortunately I cannot split because it's ETR and I cannot give you. So there is, and everything is monolithic integration, very simple one that you can see. No. For to have high power, because we need high power, continuous with it, exactly, and at the same time, with the difference wavelength, so we try to develop again the high power phase locked based on optical phase arrays. And that, here you can see that by using, again, the sample grading, the things that I mentioned, and we have here, by using the DFP and at the same time, optical Phase locked, we have here for the six millimeter cavity length at 8.1 micro. We have more than 8.2 watts continuous wave with the only 1.5 kilo per square centimeter for the threshold current density. And the wall plug efficiency is more than 9.5 and at the same time is perfectly phase locked because that's the far field, experimental and the theory, and show that the spectral line width is 1.2 nanometer, that is the limited by the spectral FTIR that we are using, and the far field is 0.25, that is, again, the limited by one part, the size, the, the pitch size, and the reach width. Now, just recently, we tried to put everything on gallium arsenide and acetone on silicon. On gallium arsenide, by having at 5.25, more than 14 watts peak power at room temperature. And that is coming, just published on the cover of the journal. And now, we try to put on silicon. That's the word first again. The tooth at 10.8 micron, more than four watts is coming, but it's peak power. That again, it was on the cover. But no, just no, we try to do continuous wave. Continuous wave at 8.45. More than no, you have more than one watt, but then we can more than one watt continuous wave. Unfortunately, it's either we cannot publish. So that is the exactly that you can see. But the, and that we sent just for the publication. So that it was, again, as I explained, was, is, and continue to be really for the basic of the quantum science that we need. Now, when we go to the terahertz, terahertz, especially between one to five terahertz, they are very a small energy, but long wavelength, and has a lot of, a lot of important application. Why? Because that can pass through many substances, such as textile, synthetic, paper, cardboard, and unlock X-ray, they have no ionizing effect because the energy is very low. So for many different applications, as an example for the security check or the medical diagnosis, that is excellent to use terrorist light rather than X-ray. On the other hand, the frequency of the terrorist is much higher than those that we are using at the present time for the wireless internet. So, that's the excellent potential for the future of high-speed wireless communication. But, what's the problem? The things we tried again to come by the exquisite material and the special design to demonstrate the world first terahertz laser diodes at four terahertz, and that is the far field only 12.5 degree, and the output power at room temperature near 2, 2.5 milliwatt. But the side mode suppression more than, again, 30 dB. We demonstrated at the same time that with the continuous wave and the tuning from the 2 to 4 terahertz, but again, at the present time, what we need, we need the following. 
we need, and thanks again to the NSF that the project that we are working on that, our objective is to have room temperature, terrorized laser diodes, compact, mass producible, high power, continuous wave, in order to have enabling all of the applications that I mentioned to you and many more. So that is, the, again, the future. But on the other hand, we know that no linear process that all of you, you are at the same time, a lot of expertise here. If we come to use, again, the in the material semiconductor laser doors that we have in the quantum cascade, if we use two different wavelengths, if we modify, because they, they, for the wavelength conversion okay, in the quantum cascade, this nonlinear properties is very strong, especially we can engineer due to the coupling between the quantum stage, quantum level. So by optimizing the second order the nonlinear susceptibility, we can have terrorized law through different frequency generation. And by optimizing the third order nonlinear susceptibility, we can have frequency comb through four wave mixing. And the choice of the frequency comb, all of you, you know, is so important. And especially now it's become very important for the spectroscopy and at the same time the, the frequency synthesis, etc. And for the spectroscopy, it passes for the one part, for the speed and for the precision, much better than for the transform. So for that, we tried again to use our quantum cascade and to demonstrate very high performance, high power continuous wave, the frequency comb at mid and long wavelength. But just recently, we tried to use it for the terrorized frequency comb and to put that to use the mid infrared frequency comb with the high terrorized DFG nonlinearity and to have the, again, the doing DFG to have, to make the mid infrared quip to become in the terrorist frequency core. And by that, we have all of the difference, the, the pump and that same time nonlinearity, everything monolithic on the same chips. What we did, we tried to do a largely detuned the DFP grating with respect to the gain peak of the quantum cascade, the, the cavity. And by that, to have the, this DFP to give the, the single mode at lambda one that is 80, 90 centimeter far from the peak, gain peak of the quantum cascade. So that is created a kind of population grating that is formed by lambda one that permit the multi-mode operation near the gain peak and try to enhance the population pulsation effect that in the triggered a, a state, the harmonic state comb that operate at lambda two. So this DFP, we have two peak, one is lambda one, lambda two. So by doing the DFG, that is the frequency comb, is the kind of intra-cavity done conversion of the multi-mode comb with the single mode of the, the DFP and create a frequency comb with the, term, with the wavelength that is equal one over one over lambda one, one over lambda two. And only you can see here that the dual wavelength of the DFP device that is permit the DFG transferring the, the infrared, the, the mid wavelength quantum cascade, the, the, the frequency comb to the exactly with the frequency generation to terrorize with the power of the five microwatt around the three, uh, the, around the three, uh, the two, eight, three uh, terrorize. So by that, again, I want to say that the result that I'm showing you is not only one publication, that you have to know that. We did the, again, the stress testing of one of the structures that we developed for to have high T0, and at 100 degree C, with the power cycling every 30 minutes, with the power more than 1.1 watt on the sample that we did, AR coating, HR coating, epicycle done, everything, all of the different technology, 
and demonstrated even more than 800 and more than that, no change. It means that everything that I'm explaining to you, especially in the endophosphate, this kind of laser, at anything that you can see, then you control all of the defect, they are forever. Now, I say that for the timeline of the Kusiel, the first one that we did with the new material and the new the, 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 the technology of the, the, the growth, and all of that, they are in the red, they are the current world record, and is continuing, and again, as I explained, that is, it was, it is, and is continuing for the really, for the quantum science and the basic of the quantum science. Now, let me to go rapidly to the detector part. Why we need the detector, and what is our goal? Our goal is exactly, as I showed, that our eyes can see only a small part, and no. so we are taking the inspiration from nature. And for that, what is the nature? Nature said that room temperature, nature said that the multicolor, because our eyes has three colors, and at the same time, nature said say that everything in nature is in the quantum. Multi-million, the a small, a small sensor that is very a few, maybe the, the not, not molecule, because molecule is much larger, a few atom. So I want, again, to show to all of you, especially to you at the same time, and everybody that to see, because when I came to this country, I went to say that on demonoid base and has to replace mercury cadmium telluride. Most of you, you know what is the mercury cadmium telluride and the 2,6 material, and at the same time for all of the focal planaries, and at the same time for the imager, that is every year more than 80, 60, 70 billion is go for that. And that, it's so important. Now, I want to say that antimonide base is the one not only replacing mercury cadmium telluride, but at the same time has much better performance than that. So that is the thing that I would like to show you. So very simple for the, okay, for the, every, especially the student, we have similar to the laser that we have intersubband or the, the majority carrier or that we have the inter, 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 interband that we have the minority carrier, electron and hole port. In the detector is exactly the same thing. We can have unipolar, the unipolar, that majority carrier, more, the, the mostly to use the electron in the balance in the conduction band, or the hole in the balance band, depends on the material that we are using. And that in this case, we say that that is going to be, and you put the, a kind of the, 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 the external electric field, and you have this separation of the electron and hole, so you can make the detection. And the detection, especially when you go to the very short or very long wavelength. Or you can use the, the two dimensions the, 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 with the, the photo, photovoltaic, it means that to minority carrier device, electron and hole. So in this case, you have active layers, and electric, you put the, the, the the, the contact, and you have the separation of the electron and hole. So each of them, they have some advantages, some disadvantages for the different wavelength at the same time. So here, I come here, that again, one of the, when I came to Northwestern, I was fascinated by the artificial eyes, and everything that you can see is classified, and no, nobody at university can have even the ideas how to do that. But I wanted to do so exactly as you can see here. That is the major focal planaries from deep UV up to near terrace that done at those first with, them, with my student at the same time. The first for the UV 280 nanometer, it was again that that was a lot of publicity. And now at the present time, our objective is the short wavelength Gagel mode single photon detection arrays. That is the things that we are watching. So I'm not going to speak. And that, the gallium indium acid in the first part, the first at the same time, the detector for the telecommunication and 2000 at the same time between in, in 18 and to, to, uh, 2000, uh, 18 to 19, that it was the first that they put at the same time on the space shuttle. 
And that, that is not, I, again, all of the information is in my book. I'm not going to speak. Indium antimonide. That is the first indium antimonide on silicon and gallium astronaut that we did. The focal panels did the lock heat, and they taught a lot of publicity, and it's transferred now to the production. And you know that, that the indium antimonide focal planner is for the many different applications. But there is one problem, the indium antimonide at room temperature is the wavelength is 7 micron. It means that in absorption, that so we have to cool it down. And at the same time, we cannot do multicolor. But it is in the production for the many, many different applications. Now coming to the quantum, quantum wave, quantum dots, because that's the physics. Physics say that exactly if you are coming to the artificial atom and the real quantum dots has to be for non bottleneck. It means that as function of temperature has not to change. So we have to have the excellent quantum dot space focal planaries that doesn't change and go to the room temperature without to have any problem if we have the real quantum dots. So that we did at the same time the first quantum dots in the indiophosphate based focal planar is all of that that you can see there are my students at the same time that we did. But one my name is Manige Rez Okay, that is that exactly, that is the, this professor asked me to write the paper at the same time and five minutes for the explain that and that is on the YouTube at the same time so you can see that, see that five minutes about the top two if you are interested. But here is this quantum dots. What does it mean? We try to do with the emotivity at the same time to make that that is what's in the gallium indium acid in the phosphate and we demonstrated the following that you can see not only quantum dots in the infrared, not only the quantum well infrared, all of that that you can see because the photon can come with the different color, can be absorbed in the quantum well or by quantum dots, and to go to higher by putting the electric field, you can have the photocurrent. But what's the problem? Is the narrow band. All right? It means that that mercury cadmium terroid is the broad band. So what is that? If we come to the quib, could we, all of that, they are narrow band. And all of that is demonstrated again in my group with the, one of my students, the uh, Chris Jelen, that he is a big boss at Notre Dame for this kind of thing. And that, so with the bat, that is the top two on Timurot. What is the top two? I will show you. That is the top two. That again, please follow me. All of you, you know that he, here I explain colon three, colon five, three, five, colon two, colon six, two, six. Two, six, they are ionic. Here I have the energy gap as function of lattice parameter for cadmium telluride and the mercury telluride and the, the mercury, the, the cadmium telluride, mercury telluride, that as you can see, this binary, they are lattice match with each other, perfect lattice match, but there is no substrate here. And at the same time, we can make the focal plan that focal plan is a detector with the different wavelength. But then, for each wavelength, you need only one composition. On the other hand, mercury is a big atom. When you come to the eight nine micron, the energy gap is small, so the effective mass decreases, and the effective mass is related to the dark current of the detector. More effective mass is small, the current is high. And on the other hand, for this material, when we go to the long wavelength, in order to go to the different wavelength, the change of the variation is very rapid. So it's very hard to have great uniformity, and there is no substrate. So for any substrate, we have to put 10 micron at least, the, the buffer. So conclusion is, this is excellent, but all of this problem. So what is the solution? That again by Leo Izaki, the Nobel Prize, 1970, he came to calculate. You have gallium antimonon, aluminum antimonon, gallium antimonon, indium acid, binary, binary. They have lattice match approximated to gallium antimonon or indium acid. You can have gallium antimonon up to four, five inches very nicely. And what does mean here? Why we say top two? Come here, if you put indium astronaut, gallium antimonide, side by side, very thin layers. 
the lattice energy gap, the conduction band of indium astronaut is at lower energy than valence band of gallium antimonide. So when you put the tin layer together in the direct lattice, you have separation of electron and hole. Hole is going to the gallium antimonide and the electron in the indium astronaut. But if you do the, in the reciprocal lattice, the minimum of the conduction band and the maximum of the valence band is just at the center of Brillouin zone. So what does it mean? It means that by changing one monolayer, you can change the gap and for one wavelength, you have many different ways to, to manage that. And at the same time, you go to the very short wavelength, 30, 32 micron, but the effective mass is exactly the same. It's indium astronaut, gallium antimonide, only you change the thickness. So you can see that it's a physics behind already you can have much better performance for the dark current for comparison to mercury cadmium terroir. And it's a three five semiconductor is very, very strong and the covalent is strong. You do this material, go to the low temperature, 10 degree K, go to the 400 degree, coming back, no change. But mercury cadmium terroir, so I will show you, it was the group that they were great. They did, and at the same time that you can see that even in 1982, they make two diodes. One based on the top two, another based on MCT, mercury cadmium terroir. And both of them at 80 degree K. You can see that here is approximately the same wavelength, 14 micron. When they decrease the temperature come to 20 degree K, mercury cadmium terroir from 14 micron is go up to 20 micron. But for the indium wave up to top two, you see that there is no really big change. Why? Because that is the three five. That the other one, mercury is very, very large and is changing rapidly. So that it was. So now look at here. You do the ETBM, we did that ETBM theory, and to use the 18 monolayer of indium astronaut and 18 monolayers of gallium antimonide. You can see that by changing one monolayer, is that is the reciprocal lattice, center of Brillouin zone. And not only you can change the gap, but you can change inter sub band at the same time to eliminate the problem of the OG and at the same time. So for one wavelength, as you can see here, we can come by using the, 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 the ETBM theory, empirical type banding model, and to have for any wavelength here, we would like to have 11 micron and to have on the gallium antimonosome. Exactly as you can see, we can come and to optimize with the theory exactly the condition that we need, and we put that just on the MB machine, and that it was here we demonstrated the world first focal planaries, and that this is a student that you can see with the Pierre Delaunay, he was from Ecole Polytechnique, he was doing the PhD, and as I explained to you, for his exam, Fenner Milton took the flight at five o'clock in the morning from Washington to come to be in his, and at the same time, the other student that I have to be that. You can see that that is the long wavelength, that is mid wavelength, that is the top two that you can see. And it was interesting because everything that we were doing, maybe teacher calling, yes, that we make a on the road, you have to go. At night, we cannot see, so we, go to, we were going to the top of the, the building and to measure to do that at night and to send. So now, we did again one thing that is very important is the following. Okay, we can do the atomic and gap engineering. Here, as you can see, that it went, yes. So you have the indium astronaut, gallium, uh, gallium antimonide. But we have aluminum antimonide. If you do know the ETBM and to incorporate one, two monolayer, as you can see, we can change the gap. So for the same material, we can go from the very deep UV, we went up to 0.3 electron volt at the per, uh, nanometer at the present time. And you can go and add it uh, to go up to the terrorist. And now here, that is the, again, to do the boats, uh, active and passive. Active the imaging with the node at 2.2, 2.2, and we did that one micron, and the less, and the passive. 
And all of that that you can see, the importance is the following. The Lewis Aki give the ideas 1971. All of the different excellent group in the United States and in the world, they were working. And they were doing great job, but nobody could make focal planar is with. So again, okay, absolutely. So they said, and they said that exactly as you can see, we did, and we said, but there is a problem. My name and, is... And the problem is the following, and that they put that now in the space station, and in the space station, they are, they are demonstrating is much more stable, much cheaper, and much better performance. But the problem is, Binary, binary, there is a problem with the gallium antimonide. Gallium antimonide has a defect, is a P-top, is a short retard, and they said that that can create, and at the same time when you do binary, binary, with the MBE, that has a lot of problems that I cannot go through. So there is another T5, top two, endomassoid, endomassoid antimonide, that you have only one element at the interface. But again, they were, they were telling, theoretically, sure that you cannot have high quantum efficiency here. So they came again, we demonstrated that they were wrong, so we tried again by doing the three five exactly the theory and the material, and as you can see here, by changing the wavelength, we tried to incorporate, again, atomic gap engineering of aluminum acid antimonon from the two micron, the one micron, less up to the top, and to demonstrate all of the things that we do with the binary. Binary, you can do that here, and even the three wave the three color that's the short mid wave so i would like to say that it was it is and for the moment what we are doing we need the longer wavelength we need the higher operation temperature and we need much better before and that's the new result that we are doing and it's on the cover and it's continuing so conclusion again we demonstrated for the first time again with antimonide and it's continuing and you have to know that that is going to be exactly as I mentioned. That is, it was, it is, and is continuing. And nothing can really replace that for the physics exactly as I mentioned to you and the material. So what is the future exactly? You are following the nature and we have to see. So everything that we can see and we are hearing, everything, unfortunately, the physics is beautiful, but to make it, that is another problem. So that it was and past, pre future, uh, present and future. So that is what in the past and not what we are doing exactly as you can see to go to the nano and at the same time the artificial material and to profit. But I want to explain one thing to everybody before to stop. Do not underestimate the mystery of carbon. That is something that we have to look on that. So I have a new book that I put that, The Mystery of Carbon Introduction to the Carbon Atom. Three Nobel Prize came already out, and I'm sure that one another is coming for the high TC superconductivity and many more. So by that, I would like to stop here, and thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>